Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo County Corso. So I'm about to show y'all something. These are my roosters. And um, I'm about to put the chickens away. They were actually at the deck. Um, front por or the back porch over there. <clears throat> Crowded around there. And I'm basically going to show you how what good boys they are. So I've got... I'm going to shut down the doors. There we go. Oh, nope. We got a bit of... Sometimes, yep, that's what we got. Got a bit of a mess. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to close that up. What I do is I always close up all the other chickens first. So there's not a distraction. Mm. Okay. Alright, well, this is all feathers, so now what I'll do is I'll open up this gate here. This is where they go, and you see I'll open it, and then they come a-running, which I just think is so funny. Now there's a red one that's usually out here, a Rhode Island Red. I'm surprised that he's one of the ones that made it, because honestly, he was my least favorite. He was one of the worst <clears throat> at like taking advantage of the other of the hens. He's very aggressive with the hens, and um, and also with uh the oh look at that structure. Oh yeah, yeah. Beautiful, y'all guys. Look at that structure. Structure. And she's still a baby, y'all. She's not full grown. So she says she's still got some maturing to do. Whoop, and we're gonna poop. We gonna poop. I don't know why my mother, or my mother, I don't know why my daughter's calling me right now. There he is. There's the Rhode Island Red. Let's see what we're doing. Hello, lovely. <laughs> so there's Kona, all excited to see Savannah, banana. Give her love. Huh? You better give that dog some love. That's right. So when we first got Kona, she was very hesitant. And, um, and it took her longer than usual to um, kind of get used to being here and um and it and it uh um was one of the harder times that I had of getting a dog to like you know accept being here um but she's totally come around now absolutely fantastic and um and what I when I realized because I was talking with her breeder and he was like, yeah, he, he's like, it can happen. He calls it kennel syndrome because these dogs are raised in kennels. And so, um, and depending upon their level of, um, you know, I would say protection, some of them are, or I would say guardian drive, some of them are less inclined to just automatically bond to a new family. It takes them a little bit longer. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, it's a guardian breed and, and, one would expect that they wouldn't just automatically bond to a new family overnight. But um, one of the things that I did to kind of ensure that she um, bonded with us was I um, gave her lots of love. I bonded with her, spent time with her, tried to play. Um, I let her sleep with me. Um, <laughs> Um, I didn't have her just out in a kennel. I, I, I did that for a little bit, but it didn't work. She kind of shut down. So I was like, ah, you know, I'm gonna bring her in. So, <clears throat> and, and, and I think that there, a lot of people would say, oh, well, you know, that dog's got a weak temperament, whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is that the Corso is an aloof breed. And when you buy an adult dog and you bring an adult dog into your home, there are going to be differences between that and a puppy. So... Um, you know, I probably, if, if she came over here and was totally fine and happy and joyous and blah, 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 you know, that's like a Labrador, you know what I'm saying? It's not a Corso. So you got to be kind of, um, 
you got to kind of recognize what you're what you're getting. You know, you're not getting a Labrador, you're not getting a Golden Retriever, you're getting a Corso. And so um, they can be reserved and hesitant um, until you really take the time to bond with them and show them that, that you are their person. And then once they're bonded to you, then they're fantastic and they're wonderful and they're everything that you want them to be. But you do have to take the time um, you know, to bond with them like that. Now, some of them are more trusting than others. Um, I would say, like, Mona was very trusting, very sweet girl. But, um, but anyway, but, you know, they're all different. They're all individuals. And, um, and I will say there was a difference in age, too. Like, I got Mona when she... No, I take that back. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, Mona was older. Mona was almost two years old. And this is, a, this is a, about six months younger than that. So, about a year and a half. So, um, those being some of the major differences, but if, if, um, this is what I'll say is if you are importing a dog, I had somebody ask me like some pointers and it's really, um, it's really important to, um, to recognize that, um, number one, these dogs, um, at least from where I buy my dogs from do not speak English. Um, they are in a country where they speak, (laughs) where they speak Serbian. So, um, so automatically you're already speaking to them in a language that they don't understand. But the good thing about dogs is that they don't really need that so much. Um, the reason they do so well is because they really are focusing on inflection. So very important that you try to use every Um, every way that you can of communicating to the dog what you want the dog to do. So try to use hand motion, try to use indicators like um, eye contact, um, pointing to, referencing, and really give them a lot of cues, um, nonverbal cues, as to what you want them to do in combination with verbal cues so that they can... um, so that they can really have the best opportunity to get the most out of what you're saying. Um, yeah, what are they doing over there? Kona! Girl, you better get out of there. That's dirty. Dirty. I need to get it cut. Come on, Kona! Um, another thing to keep in mind is the time zones are often very different. I remember that once when I got to Europe, it took me a long time to, um, to, um, what is that? Hey, Kona. It took me, it it took me a long time to adjust and even coming. And what's weird is that it, it actually took me longer to adjust to coming back home than it even did to going there. Cause I was more distracted when I was there. I was very busy. Oh my gosh. And I was doing a lot. What are you doing? Funny girl. What you doing, funny girl? You should run from her. <laughs> what are you doing, Kona? What are you doing, sweet baby? Come here. Your baby. Your baby. <laughs> your baby. Oh, your baby. So me, she took a little bit longer to get accustomed to me because I'm, I have more of an alpha personality. And, um, and that's really not it, actually. I take that back. The day that I got her, I was very sick, and I was upstairs, um, and Savannah had to watch her for me. So for the first two days, um, she bonded with Savannah, and um, and so that's why she's way more chill with Savannah than she is with me. Oh Lord, don't run with sticks in your mouth, sweetie. That is an acqu- that is an acquired skill. I wouldn't. No, no, no. I wouldn't do that. She's not good at running with sticks in her mouth. She runs with like the tip of it. And, um, I don't like it because I was playing with her this morning and she was doing that and I was like, "Uh." (laughs) you're a funny dog. You're a funny dog. And, and the thing is, is like, I know what these lines temperaments are like because I have her brother's daughter and they're fantastic. So, um, so I'm not at all worried about that. But I just, um, but anyway, yeah, times, yeah, back, back onto the subject. Time zones, big deal. Um, you got to give the dog time to adjust to the time zone. So I'd give them at least two weeks because they're going to want to be, um, they're going to want to be awake, 
uh, whenever you're sleeping. Hey, <laughs> baby. You're sweet baby. Like you're sweet baby. You're sweet baby. Oh, God, he did it. it was so horrible. Mm. Mm. Um, and another thing to do is to is is also is to after maybe the first week, maybe maybe um, maybe work on keeping them awake during the day, not letting them sleep the whole time so that um, so that they don't um, uh, so that they don't want to stay awake all night. So she, so Savannah kind of scared her because she grabbed her face, but um, but anyway, but she barely knows us. I think we've had her like what two weeks, maybe two weeks, something like that. So, um, two and a half, soon. hmm. They'll probably be closer to three weeks soon. But. Yeah, but she's made a lot of progress, and um, and so anyway, so yeah, so there's there's stuff that you can do to make it easier on them. Um, but you really want to spend the time with them to bond with them. You got to give a lot of patience. You know, um, if you bring in a puppy, it's a lot easier. But even then, depending upon the breed, most countries you can't bring these dogs in until they're around four four months old or older. And so you're really getting them at a very bad time. Because, and um, I had a, a mentor of mine describe it like this. She probably got something, a little bit of stick in her mouth from whenever she got in her mouth. So, um, we were talking about Remy and I was, I was, I had, I had, when Remy was a puppy, hello you guys. And, um, I literally opened it for you already. I don't know why you're over here hanging out with me. I mean, I appreciate the comfort and you know, that, that you feel that you have comfort with me, but I, it's open and you can go to bed. <clears throat> um, not nope, not chicken aggressive. So, um, can you check her mouth for me? So anyway, so a lot of guardian breeds go through a fear stage, a natural fear stage. I don't see anything. Okay. And, um, and so if you, if you get them during that time, and it can be anywhere between four and I would say like nine months old. Um, and every dog is going to go through it at a different rate. And so, um, and some may not go through it at all, but most do. Most do. And so... Um, it's important to keep that in mind as well, and um, sometimes it can be really hard to know and really hard to make the call of, is this dog going to get better or is this really a weak temperament? And I've, I've made that choice um, quite a few times, and I've been wrong a couple times. Um, so just keeping that in mind, I was right a few, quite a few times, and then I've been wrong a couple times. So, and what I will, what I will say is that. Usually when I'm wrong, it's the behavior is conditional. So for example, um, the, the dog will exhibit the bad behavior in one circumstance, but is capable of exhibiting good behavior under other circumstances. So, um, so anyway, that's, that really seems to be the major contributing factor that I've, that I've noticed. Kona! <laughs> Come here, baby girl. Come here, baby girl. Yeah. Come here, baby. Come here, Kona. Come here, baby. Kona. Come here, baby. She's now listening to me, Savannah. Yeah, she's seeing this just just goes to show what happens when a dog's not bonded to you. I told Savannah I was like, never again. <laughs> I was like, I don't care if I'm on death's door, I will tie that dog to my bedpost. And not because I like, not because I don't want the dog to be bonded to Savannah. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm the adult in the house. I'm the one that manages everything. So obviously it's better for me to be the one that she's more attached to. But regardless, I'm just gonna keep working with her, which is what I've been doing. And um I actually recently started to do that because I had, I had put her outside thinking, ah, oh, you know, maybe she'll just kind of, um, reset and kind of get used to me being out there taking care of him or whatever, but that didn't work. So I just was like, you know what, I'm just going to bring her in and I'm just going to, I'm just going to rebond with her. You know what I mean? Like give myself the opportunity to really bond with her. You don't know how to play. You don't know how to do that. Th She's trying to play with you, but you don't, there you go. But you got to back up when you do that. You got to dance around like she does. You can't just do that. And then back up. You can't get, you, you got to, you, it's like a beckoning of play. So you crouch down and then you pop and then you back up, right? Crouch down 
pop, and then back up. And then run, run, run. Like she did. Come on, man. It's just mirroring behavior. No. That's just nothing but pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, exactly. You can make this dog run away, Savannah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl, Kona. Yeah, see, yeah. There's just trust being built there, you know what I mean? Just trust being built. And really just all that boils down to is that she doesn't necessarily trust that we won't hurt her. And, you know, it's not an unreasonable thing, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot going on here. And we're big adults. And she's, you know, been in a kennel her whole life. So, I really like Kona. I think she's going to be a really cool dog. She's 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 doing well. Anyway, well, I'm going to let y'all go. i got to put these roosters away, and then i got to go to bed. Hello, lovely. Hello, lovely. This is running. Say hello. Hello. Tired right now. You guys excuse me. I've had a headache all day. Yeah, she's had a headache all day. Y'all, Savannah went to a prom. She was invited. She was invited to the prom. Whoa. Sorry, that's my best, like, emo song to go. She went to it was really beautiful, though, honestly. Her and her, her couple, they were a very cute couple. He looked like, he looks like Donald Trump, but they're not, apparently they're not dating. And, um, and you don't, anyway. I'm not saying I don't we're not okay, all right, my bad, bro. I'm, I'm just. I like to put a title on things that don't have a title. Okay, there's no title on that. But anyway, they went to prom together, and they were very cute, and I was very proud. So, now, awkward moments brought to you by Sense of Temple Crossover. Goodbye. Chicken.